Welcome to another episode of the UX Portfolio Series. Recently, I got a message from one of the audience members wondering how to structure a project in a junior portfolio, how to avoid looking the same as portfolios from other classmates and peers, and how to find a balance between too much and too little content. Well, since I've been working on the portfolio series, perfect timing and shout out for any who brought my attention to this. So in this video, I'm gonna address some of those questions and let's get started and roll the intro. My name is Justin and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Today we're going to take a close look at how to structure content in a project in a UX portfolio. I'm going to go through it in a slightly higher level view so you can use it as a checklist or a reference tool to iterate on your next project or rather as a guide to how you can create a nicer presentation for your next project. Without further ado, let's wait a second. Bonus content in the end too. So now let's dive right in. So chapter one, what content should go into a project in a UX design portfolio? How should you structure it? How much or how little content to put? I will break down the content in three sections, intro, result, and the process. The intro will be essentially a summary screen or a summary section, summary panel to do all the highlights, the metrics, the roles, what did you do? How long did you spend on this project? Maybe what tool did you use? Who did you collaborate with? This is very simple, straightforward. It's mostly text, but don't put too much detail into it. It's really a few blocks of elements and that's it. Next will be result. It's where you will do your product showcase. You want to sell your product, sell your design. So the goal or rather emotional response here is that when you see it, you will really want to download it if it's an app design or you want to use it. If it's an industrial design project, maybe that's something that you want to hold in your hand to feel it, to take a look at it around or buy it. You must showcase your result in a way that it resonates with you or resonates with the audience. Something like, oh, that's very cool. Oh, I will totally use this thing. That would be sick. Is it a real product? Can I buy it? Can I download it? Lastly, process. You might think process is boring, but please don't make it boring. And it's not supposed to be boring. If your process is too boring, it's literally a log of what you do, then you'd rather not show it. And I'll have more insight on that later. Essentially, you want to use the process, use this section as the behind the scene from the movie, for example. If you were to show anything, it should be cool insights, some exciting discoveries that you encounter in the process of developing your final solution, your final design. Or maybe you did a crazy study with 500 people, then that's something phenomenal to show. Or you have a rate of prototypes all laid out on the table. That's cool to see. So think of things that along those lines, it's not supposed to be boring. So let's jump to some actionable items. What can you do? I'm gonna show you one way to do it for a junior portfolio. It's just a sample, just an example for reference only. Of course, you can start with this and preferably, over time, you should develop your own way to present your project. So here we go. First, you have the intro, which we talked about, the highlights and roles and things like that. And then you have six images for your result, for your outcome, for the final design. And then you have two images for your processes. It's up to you which two parts of the process you want to show or to compete for these two slots. Or another example, six images for result, three images for process. And again, like I mentioned in the six don'ts for portfolio video, don't let your process drive the project. So the number of images for the result has to be more than that for the process. Chapter two, what's the difference between a junior design portfolio and a senior designer portfolio? Generally speaking, a junior designer portfolio tend to be more result plus process driven versus a senior designer portfolio tend to be more just result driven. If we put them in a Venn diagram, junior design portfolios tend to completely encompass the one from senior designers. And here's a few reasons why. Reason one, junior designers have to show, have to demonstrate their thought process. How do they find their way within the design process to get to the solution? They will have to explain how they got there to prove that they understand the fundamental, the design process. 
While senior designers, they really don't have to prove that because by definition, if they're senior designers, they should know the process. If not, what are you doing here? Another reason, once you have a job and become a senior designer, your mindset tend to change. You don't need to look for another job necessary so you wouldn't put the same amount of effort as you were a fresh grad or looking for internship into building your portfolio to create that amount of content. Or rather put, they might not be as motivated. And of course, once you're already in, why not just enjoy your life a little more? But don't get me wrong, I still have an however here. When a senior designer looks for another role, they still have to go for an on-site interview, which means a 45 minute presentation about your previous work. So if you don't already have some of the process, some of the good findings, big discovery, those materials ready, there's no way you can present that in a presentation to make it engaging, informative, to convince your next company to hire you. Chapter three, why junior designer portfolios look pretty much the same? Or rather, how to avoid your portfolio look the same as others. UX portfolios look similar, it's not news. It's actually quite common. If you are out of bootcamp, yours are probably very similar to those in the same camp with you. When you are early in your school design program, maybe a freshman, sophomore, when everybody does the same project, likely your portfolio is gonna look the same as others. Or if you do a group project, everybody on the same team, they likely to have a similar content and hence a similar portfolio project. Well, what can you do? It appears to me there's only one way, which is to go above and beyond. Here might be some actions you can take. You can spend more time and effort to take some findings that other peers don't. You can spend more time on experimenting or trying out new things on better way and newer way to present your project. You need to do things that others don't. Use a video to present your project if other uses images. Use a prototype to present if others use videos. Plan and develop the story through images for the process. The entire project page, the project presentation, it's not meant to be a logbook. It's not about that I did A, B, C, and D. It's about I did A, which leads to B. Then it sparks C, and then it develops into D. There's a logic to it, there's a connection. There's something that weaves everything together. That's how you have a story. Find out what that is. Why am I dancing? Find out what that is and then elevate that, celebrate that, do a nice presentation around everything that you did. So in the end, it's really the action mile that separates you from the rest. There might be another way, but this is the way that I have been doing the whole time. If you have already done all those, even if you have the exact same structure, not content, not the actual images, the same structure, intro, six images for result, two images for process, it will not feel the same. I repeat, it will not feel the same because you have taken an extra mile on it. There's actually another reason why their portfolio tend to look very similar because they didn't watch my videos for the useful tips to iterate on their portfolio. So you guys are ahead, you're good. Obviously that's a joke, please spread out the words, let other peers, let your other designer friends improve too. It's better to have a stronger designer community. Those are some of my personal insights after all these years of portfolio iterations and recently, portfolio screening working in Silicon Valley. Hope that's helpful and now it's time for shout outs for those who commented in my previous video. First up, thank you Nahal, I'm glad that I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, feel free to send your portfolio to me when you're ready. Thank you, Kelvin. Yeah, keep it up. Yeah, I'm ready when you're ready. Next, Pranjo, Pranjo, Pranjo. I am seriously having trouble pronouncing this. So if you see this, please correct me in the comment section down below and I will correct it in my next video. So if you wanna see me embarrassing myself pronouncing your name, make sure to leave a comment down below. And now it's time for bonus content. Bonus content. I'm more than happy to take a look at your portfolio and give you some feedback. All you have to do is one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video. And then you can send your portfolio link to my email, which you can find in my about tab in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so that I know you have left a comment and then I will take a look at your portfolio, give you some feedback, 
and give you a shout out in the next video. Good luck to you all on your next UX design portfolio iteration, future internships, and full-time jobs. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts and I'll greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!